welcome to the very last day and very last video. It happens to be an upload day of 2023. So I thought we'd have a laugh at some stupid celebrities today. Might be fun. What have they been doing now? What haven't they been doing? They can say some very bad things, some very misinformed things sometimes. And there's been no shortage of that this year. So I thought we'd take a look at some of the celebrity ableist highlights of the year. And we'll also throw in a few, you know, from previous years, some lifetime achievement awards here. We have a bit of Sia, we have a bit of Cardi B, we have a bit of Elon Musk. Let's start with Matthew Healy. <laughs> I don't know what it is with Matthew Healy. I don't know why he can't shut his mouth. I'm pretty sure he's mentioned that he's an adhd -er. We also do know that he is not always, you know, shying away from substances. I don't know, just some of the things that happen. I'm just like, why? How did this make its way into the world? This was a tweet from something called Pop Base and it says, Matty Healy deactivated after Lucy Dacus of Boy Genius responded to this tweet about the band. Matty Healy tweeted, I told Lucy Dacus that Boy Genius had inspired me and George to start a new band called Girl Arward. I don't really hear from her that often. And then she quoted it and replied, you don't hear from me at all. Ooh. And then <laughs> Matty Healy with no profile picture says, yeah, this never goes well, does it? And then he uh, removed himself from Twitter. So I don't know, I definitely think in terms of, you know, most ableist things that could have possibly been said by a celebrity this year, already we're seeing a serious contender for the gold medal here. This is pretty terrible. I don't know if I really need to tell people why the R word isn't great. Just, just don't use it. Even the most snowflake averse among us, I think would probably agree that this was unacceptable. I mean, it's horrible for so many reasons. It also feels kind of sexist as well. The whole point of the name Boy Genius was kind of a sort of pushback against sexism and, you know, boy being always seen as so incredible and amazing and talented and like to then come back and say you know girl R word I don't know it's just wrong for so many reasons. How do people feel about his whole stunt in Malaysia? I know a lot of people in the LGBT plus community weren't super happy with that. The next one, the article about it was from the 29th of December 2022, but I think we can sneak it in. It's a news article that says, Julia Hartley Brewer's autistic tweet trolling Greta Thunberg just got the responses she deserved. This was the whole thing that Greta had with Andrew Tate, which was quite funny actually. I mean, the fact that Andrew Tate exists is not particularly funny to me. So he tweeted, Hello Greta, I have 33 cars. My Bugatti has a W16, 8.5, OL quad turbo my two all caps Ferrari 812 I don't know okay a bunch of car stuff this is just the start please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collections and their respective enormous emissions. And Greta, who if you didn't know, she is autistic. She responded and said, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergy at getalive.com. Thank you, Greta. But then this TV presenter, Julia Hartley Brewer, she decided to join in. I don't know if this is the kind of stuff that she typically does. I choose Andrew Tate's life every single time over the life of a half educated. She's 19, so I suppose, yeah, she probably isn't finished with her education. Should she continue? Not really any of your business. Autistic, doom-mongering, ego-cultist, and the only car I own is a diesel car. Don't know. Really lovely to see a grown woman using the word autistic as an insult when it was not relevant at all. Great. This is really what we want to be seeing in 2023. I don't know who's winning the title at the moment. Is it Matty Healy using the R word or full grown woman using the word autistic itself as if it's an insult? I don't know who this person is, but I can't imagine why coming to Andrew Tate's defense seemed like a good move, but there you are. I mean, good. I suppose in a way, if people keep doing stupid stuff like this, it kind of d looks ridiculous and is horrifying to most sane people, I would say on this earth. So I mean, maybe it'll help more people to kind of be anti-ableism, to understand the kind of bullying that autistic people can endure because there's no way you can look at that and say that that's an okay tweet to make. Most people would be like, what the hell? This tweet has been deleted, but how depressing to see Julia being so offensive. Is it any wonder that it's so hard to win decent funding and support for autistic people when there are such attitudes among thought leaders? Is she a thought leader? I don't know, I hope she's not leading any thoughts. Okay, so then she responded and said, I've deleted my previous tweet that mentioned Greta's autism. <laughs> Again, a lot of autistic people don't like you talking about autism as if it's like a separate thing that they carry around or like some illness that they've contracted, but okay. Because although I only referred to it because she states it in her own Twitter bio, people decided to take offense at a fact. In her own Twitter bio, she's not using it as an insult. She's saying it 
because she's proud of it. There's no reason why she shouldn't be proud of it, but that doesn't give you the right to throw it back in someone's face as an insult. This just shows why she feels the need to have it in her Twitter bio. You know, like for younger autistic people and older autistic people and autistic people of the same age, you know, it's kind of inspiring to see somebody stand for something. And like you can see in Greta, a lot of the positive traits of being autistic, this like strong sense of justice and this willingness to go against the grain and stand up for what you think is right, even when that's not a popular opinion and gets you a lot of stupid tweets from Andrew Tate, you know? I'm very happy for her to continue having that in her bio. Biog, as Julia says. People decided to take offense at a fact, even though they had no problem with this woman calling a man small bit yawn. Um, so that's equally as insulting? Andrew Tate has small D in his bio, so it's fine. <laughs> Imagine if he did. <laughs> Someone needs to make that happen. I don't think that's comparable. Do I need to explain why I don't think that that's comparable? Oh good, I thought it was because you were using it as a slur in a list of things you didn't want to be. I'm glad you've cleared this up and clarified that you're not a selfish, disingenuous grifter. <laughs> Okay, that's really funny. Yeah, so they're being sarcastic there. Next, we have Cardi B. It's a glorious Daily Mail article. <laughs> Yay! You always know it's a good day when you're reading the mail online. Cardi B responds to online troll who called three-year-old daughter culture autistic as she tells them to go play in traffic but gets blowback as fans point out that autism is not an insult. Okay, so once again, we have autistic being used as an insult. I imagine like th that's probably why she told people to go play in traffic as she said. Certainly it would have been cool if Cardi B had turned around and said, if she is autistic, I'm proud of her. There's nothing wrong with being autistic. Probably would have been a better response, but you know, I can see why you would maybe be defensive over your child, you know, getting random comments from strangers. Even if you are autistic, it can be a bit weird when somebody else points things out or somebody else tries to diagnose you. It's just not nice to feel like you're being perceived, is it, sometimes? <laughs> to feel like the people around you are kind of analyzing you and like, in this case, analyzing your child. I don't know, it must be really hard when you're famous and your child kind of didn't choose this life and you know, you know what it's like to be scrutinized all the time, but when you have a child as a famous person, they get brought into that too. Like, I can understand having a kind of defensive response, but let's see. Cardi B fired up a strong response to an online troll who called her three-year-old daughter culture autistic in a tweet on Friday. My daughter is not autistic. You can't call her ugly, so y'all have to diagnose her with something. Go play in traffic, B word. The rapper 29 replied in the heat of the moment. However, her response received mixed reviews from fans who pointed out that autism is not to be taken as an insult. The since deleted tweet read, your daughter is literally autistic and you're on stan Twitter instead of making sure she's not sticking her finger in outlets. That was an inappropriate tweet, so I can see why she kind of felt like she wanted to clap back. Again, Cardi B is not always known for the most measured responses to abuse that gets fired her way. She continued in another tweet writing, why y'all bring up kids for? What the F my kids gotta do with your misery? Fans then question the reply saying, you have every right to defend your child. I'm just trying to understand why saying a child is autistic would be an insult. If you don't understand anything pertaining to a child having autism, you should know that they are gifted and amazing in their own individual way. I'm not really sure how I feel about that sentiment. That kind of reminds me of the memes that I responded to in that like autism mom memes video like you don't have to go over the top the other way you can just be like autistic kids are of equal value and deserve equal rights and equal respect and no it is not an insult i think people could have just kind of politely pointed that out to her it's not great for anyone on either side to be kind of using autistic as an insult what world are we living in i had a few comments after i posted the video about chloe hayden and the kind of pushback that she got on social media that led to her now deciding to step back from social media and have you know other people manage her social media for her but there were a lot of people in the comments saying they feel like autistic is being used as an insult more by gen z and i don't want to like segregate everyone into generations and be a point the finger at any specific generation but it is kind of sad that isn't it like why it just feels like we kind of take a few step backwards sometimes but I think overall things are getting better I've had similar criticism in the past as well she streamed a rant in April once again clarifying her kids do not have autism there's nothing wrong with that disorder I have friends that have children that are autistic but my kid doesn't have that yeah it's kind of the warning of the like doesn't have that like you know the wanting to distance yourself from it but I mean it doesn't help that people are making it seem like it is something to be ashamed of and something to be stigmatized when they're kind of throwing it at you. So if I wanted to say, don't put that S on my kid, I can say that. Mm. I think probably 
the people actually calling her child autistic, I assume as an insult and not as a like, maybe she's showing some traits and you might want to look into this for the sake of her own well-being. I assume it's just a like using autism as an insult, in which case those people need to check themselves. And yeah, Cardi B could do with sometimes wording things better too. But I can understand being defensive when your children are involved. Next we have Graham Linehan, who you might have heard of. He was suspended from Twitter in 2022 for tweeting that men aren't women though. In response to a post by the Women's Institute wishing a happy pride to its trans members, the BAFTA winning comedy writer soon found himself divorced, jobless and virtually friendless. He's kind of compared puberty blockers to eugenics. And he said, during the second world war, the German party that was in power experimented on gender non-conforming autistic children and we are experimenting on gender non-conforming autistic children. So we're trying to use saying autistic children to win the sympathy vote. This infantilization of autistic people because we do see that quite a number of autistic people are also trans kind of gets used against trans people and it's just not very nice to anyone involved. What is the suggestion that autistic people shouldn't be allowed to have bodily autonomy? That autistic people don't have the right to choose whatever healthcare they want? That they don't have any self insight? That they can't make decisions about their identity? It's a bit like, oh, because you feel like these people don't really care about autistic people in general, just when they can use autistic people as a like way to kind of try and get the sympathy vote. Look, they're targeting the poor defenseless autistics over there. It's like some sort of conspiracy plot here. Who is experimenting on young autistic children? Then he goes on to argue that the transgender movement produces no art, adding there's no great trans films, there's no great trans creators of music. Have you listened to Ethel Cain? All the books that come out by trans authors are universally panned because of their incoherence. What is this guy talking about? Oh no. I think he's just in a really bad mental place and I think he needs to get some help. Like he's kind of lost everything as a result of his beliefs and now he has to kind of find reasons, go looking for reasons to double down. It's just so ridiculous. Obviously, like I don't even need to insult trans people by responding to that. But obviously there is some great trans art out there. Again, Ethel Kane, autistic and trans, incredible, incredible, most beautiful music. Gives me all the feels. Obviously no offense, he's got quite a good song that this guy might want to listen to called Scumbag that's come out recently. Contrapoints his videos, feature length, beautiful films. Comment down below your favorite trans artists, okay? I don't see how you can try and say that supporting trans people is just eugenics and then talk about a whole group of people like that and think that that's somehow appropriate, you know? And that somehow the trans activists in quotation marks, somehow they're, they're the fascists here. We have an entry from June from Elon Musk. This tweet just boosted by Elon Musk is one of the most vicious online attacks on autistic people I've ever seen. I honestly feel sorry for any autistic folks who ever took him as a role model. The meme is the Drake like, oh no, go away face. And we have a shirt with protect trans kids. Is that Elliot Page wearing that shirt? And then there's a yeah, that's that's right, Drake face. And then it says, sterilize autistic kids. Um, Elon Musk seems to agree with this sentiment. And he also believes that, that these children who want to transition, they're not actually trans. They are just attracted to the same sex. We know that's not true because there are many people who transition and are gay. Natalie Wynn, as I mentioned, is a lesbian. So no offense who I mentioned, who is a trans man, is in a relationship with a man. Also, this is ridiculous because every story, every story I've heard from a trans person about their transition involves them being informed about their fertility and they have the conversations with their doctor about whether they want to have biological children or they want to have the option of having biological children one day. You can freeze your eggs, you can save some sperm, there are things that you can do. So yeah, it's certainly not eugenics and like about stopping those people from reproducing. I don't know, this is a very weird fear-mongering tactic. I think there's some sort of government government conspiracy to sterilize autistic people? I don't think so. There's a lot of things against autistic people. Luckily, that is no longer one of them. It's similar to when people try and argue that if you're in a, a gay relationship, you won't be able to have biological children. Yeah, but we have ways. <laughs> there are medical advancements. People can still have children. Like, don't fear. The human race is not going to die out. We have this old entry from 
Girl Meets World, Sabrina Carpenter has made it onto this list. This is a Disney Channel TV program that I've never seen before, but been posted on TikTok. And one of the characters is thinking they might be autistic. You wanna see if I have autism? You don't. Let's go tell them you don't. I might have a type of autism called Asperger's syndrome. You don't. What is it? Is it a disorder that affects a person's- You don't. And they're all moving towards him. <laughs> it seemed like quite threatening at the beginning. You don't. You don't. Also, I don't know when this came out, so I don't know if the word Asperger's was still being used in the diagnostic criteria in the US or if they were just kind of misinformed. I don't know what the situation was there, but we don't really use that word anymore. Individual autistic people might still use it to describe themselves if that was what they were diagnosed as, but a lot of us choose not to use it because it's connected to a guy who was actually involved in eugenics. Behavior. Farkle, when I said that you were a little farkly, what I meant was that- Yeah, you behave just like a perfectly normal Farkle. You do. We'll get the results from today's interview and we'll know. We know. We don't know. I don't know, it was just the way they were acting like it was a terminal disease. Like, we don't know yet. We haven't confirmed the diagnosis. Do people think that you getting that diagnosis changes anything about who you are as a person? It's just, you know, how your mind works. It's how you've always been. Like getting the autism diagnosis, it doesn't make a person autistic. If he is an autistic person, this fictional character, then he's always been an autistic person. But if you don't know that you're autistic, you can be really mean to yourself in your head because you don't know why you struggle with things that other people don't. And then other people will give you other labels, you know? They'll call you weird and a freak and all these other lovely things that people like to call autistic people, you know? I wonder like if I had been diagnosed as a child, like, would my parents have been devastated? Would they have been really upset, I don't know, you know, despite the fact that many family members before me had gone undiagnosed. Anyway, I hope that was from a long time ago. Apparently now Sia has said that she's autistic, so if you don't know there was some controversy a few years ago about a film that Sia brought out called Music. Jessie Gender actually has a video, another example of great art about Sia and I have never watched the movie myself but you know what in a way I was thinking recently I think like that, that whole controversy kind of gave a lot of autistic creators a boost and like would I have actually found out that I was autistic if it wasn't for that so I don't know maybe maybe I owe Sia my autism diagnosis. The article is called Being Autistic Doesn't Absolve Sia of Dangerous Ableism. There was backlash from the autistic community about this film I think a lot of people felt like she was just wanted to make a film about an issue and she just kind of picked something that she hadn't massively researched. People said why don't you have an actual autistic person in the main role and then she replied and said that, that that hadn't worked for various reasons, the environment just wasn't suitable so then people were kind of like well why didn't you change the environment. You know when you're trying to make a film to support the autistic community if that is your intention like yeah it kind of would send a good message to have created an environment that was suitable for an autistic person. Then I think somebody said something like I'm autistic, I'm an actor, you know, and kind of basically saying there's a lot of autistic actresses out there you could have used an autistic person and then she kind of responded saying something along the lines of like well maybe you're not that good and that's why you weren't chosen you know like she was quite abrupt with the autistic community and didn't have the best response. This week Australian pop singer Sia has revealed that she is autistic. Speaking to Rob as a podcast Sia quite casually mentioned that she is on the spectrum a term which it's appropriate to point out is shunned by many autistic advocates. Yeah I think it, is that just because it kind of connects this whole idea of being a little bit autistic? Why can't you just say that you're autistic? Sia's diagnosis comes two years after her directorial debut, Music, a film about a non-speaking autistic teenager, was widely criticised by autistic viewers for a scene in which, okay, yeah, the character is held face down during a meltdown in a form of restraint that is potentially fatal. Okay, yeah. After Music was nominated for two Golden Globes, Sia tweeted an apology to the autistic community for the film, but later deleted her Twitter account altogether. Unsurprisingly, reaction from the autistic community this week following the news that Sia is autistic has been instant with many arguing that the singer's diagnosis doesn't excuse her past actions and inactions. Sia deserved all the backlash she got and then some. Being autistic doesn't make it okay, Sia. It makes it worse. I don't know if it necessarily makes it worse. Like, autistic people themselves definitely can be ableist. There are actual autistic people on that fake disorder cringe subreddit for sure and also if you don't know you're autistic maybe you have even more of a reason because you've like kind of rejected parts of yourself and you're kind of disgusted by parts of yourself maybe have a stronger aversion when you see it in other people when I've watched videos of people openly stimming and flapping their hands the way I used to do as a child and the way I still do in private it makes me feel weird because I think it reminds me of like parts of myself that I've been ashamed of so I think that could make sense I don't know if it necessarily makes it worse 
obviously she still wasn't great in how she responded to the autistic community. The film itself still wasn't great. Maybe if she'd done a bit more research for the film, she would have discovered that she was autistic sooner. She now reveals, I'm on the spectrum for 45 years. I was like, I've got to put my human suit on. And only in the last two years have I become fully, fully myself. So this person who wrote the article said, in primary school, I felt a burning embarrassment watching an autistic boy in my class struggle to make friends and move his body appropriately in the playground. In high school, I was in love with a rock musician diagnosed with what was then called Asperger's syndrome. I obsessively read about autism. I even considered becoming ABA therapist in order to help autistic children. As an adult, I cringed at other grown adults having meltdowns in public or enjoying their special interests. Years later, at the age of 28, I was diagnosed as autistic. Yeah, I think sometimes we can recognize these things in ourselves and feel kind of disgust. It's almost like our, our deepest fear in a way is being perceived as autistic because we maybe at a very young age we have received negative feedback for seeming autistic. So our whole persona when we're out in the real world is, you know, don't be autistic. So seeing examples of that might give you quite a big reaction. I personally didn't really have this response. I felt more like a lot of sympathy towards other autistic people. And I always thought kind of a little bit like, which is not, you know, a great way to think, oh, aren't I a nice person? I have nice thoughts towards autistic people. It's horrible, isn't it? That our society kind of trains you to think like that. But I didn't realize that actually I was relating to these people and like after I'd been diagnosed I went to look up somebody who was autistic actually who was at my school and I went on their Twitter page and I saw that we had both retweeted the same tweet I hadn't been following this person it was during COVID and it was like but when you think about it don't we always wear a mask and I hadn't been on their page for ages and I didn't follow them and it didn't even have that many retweets and I was like oh my god <laughs> and we didn't have any like mutual follows because I didn't really follow anyone from my school and I was like what so yeah, it's funny. I was just there thinking like, oh, aren't I a nice ally? It's probably a bit similar to when you're gay and you have a lot of gay friends and you're like, aren't I a great ally? <laughs> and then later on you realize, oh, I wasn't a great ally after all. I was actually selfish AF, Never mind. I was only embarrassed by autistic people's odd behavior because it mirrored my own struggles and internalized shame. Yeah, as I've said many times, I had this deep fear as a very young person that I was gonna be institutionalized if anyone ever saw me flapping my hands. I don't even know where that idea comes from. Why did that, was that idea even in my brain? I don't know, but I felt like there were parts of myself that I needed to hide in order to keep myself safe, for sure. I only obsessed over a famous musician's Asperger's diagnosis because I saw myself in him. I wanted to become an ABA therapist because I had no idea how harmful and abusive ABA can be and because I desperately wanted to help my undiagnosed, traumatized childhood self. Yeah, that makes sense. Right before I stumbled upon being autistic, I'd kind of made the decision that I might want to be a psychologist. And the reason I had in my head is because I want to help people like, and I could think in my head of a few people in my life that I really particularly wanted to help. And now looking back, I'm like, Pretty sure they were all neurodivergent humans. So yeah, I kind of did the same thing. We're all just selfish, man, <laughs> and I'm joking. And that's where the problem is and why the autistic community hasn't forgiven Sia. Sia is washing hands of the issue. For a wealthy white award-winning artist like Sia, autism can appear to be a vague label of quirkiness. Sia used the word kook as well as on the spectrum. For almost everyone else, autism dictates every aspect of our lives, often negatively, our relationships, finances, our physical and mental health. I don't think Sia, from what I know, I know that she had mental health struggles throughout her life, so it kind of does make sense if she has been diagnosed autistic. Most of us have no support. We have no choice but to own our autism, do our own research and do our best to hold others to account. Not least of all because dangerous misconceptions and misrepresentations of autism by powerful privileged people continue to stigmatize and harm autistic people. Yeah, I agree with the second half of that, that most of us have no support so we have no choice but to own our autism, do our own research. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if maybe they're conflating a different kind of types of privilege, like just because she's financially privileged and she's successful doesn't mean that she necessarily had support for being autistic if she didn't know she was autistic and a lot of people don't know they're autistic and that's not their fault it's not because your struggles haven't been big enough you may have got every other diagnosis under the sun you just haven't been in the right place at the right time for people to realize that, that you're autistic either instead of or as well as these mental health conditions that you have so yeah i mean i don't know i just feel like for other people reading that who maybe they they kind of see themselves in seer or something they, that might be a little bit invalidating it's just kind of why we don't like the whole like on the spectrum thing because it implies, you know, being on the edge, like I'm just a little bit autistic, like I'm not fully going to admit it. And it could kind of imply that it's an insult 
that autism is a slur. It's, I don't, are we gonna have to change the word autistic at some point because it's gonna end up being used so negatively? I don't know, it's not negative. Let's keep saying it, autistic. Okay, if you need something cozy to watch this New Year's Eve, if you're not going out, I'm not gonna be going out for sure. I made a memes reaction video last week, which is just a little fun one. Thank you so much for everything that you've given me this year. I feel so much more like confident in my identity now as an autistic person. And thank you to everyone who's on Patreon. I have a lovely Discord community over on Patreon and everyone there, even if you're on the lowest tier, you get two exclusive videos every month. And there's a bunch of other stuff on the higher tiers as well. Having the Patreons allowed me to post more in December. Going forwards, I'm still kind of trying to figure out the balance between like wanting to post frequently for you but also wanting to do like videos where I really dive deep into research and I mean even just like my memes, they take a long time to edit. I'm just trying to figure out you know what is the kind of pace that is sustainable while also keeping the videos good and you know keep pushing myself. I'll figure it out. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye!